Well, good morning. I uh, wanted to, uh, been waiting for this piece of kit to come in, wanted to do a, a, uh, a quick uh, video before I duck off to work. Uh, it's morning, so I have uh, uh, some nice coffee. And the other thing that I want to do is to uh, try out the new microphone that I bought. So uh, hopefully the audio on this will, uh, will work. Now, uh, the Pro Tools that I'm using, I bought a little uh, Focusrite and stuff, um, and Sennheiser microphone. So hopefully the, the Pro Tools will keep recording. Otherwise, you might uh, hear the audio change during the, the process. Anyway, what is this piece of kit? It is an 8477A uh, calibrator. It is designed specifically to help you calibrate uh, power meters, such as the 432A that we see here. Now, the 432A, the 431s, uh, those series, the 432, I've been looking at a 432B as well, which has a digital readout. Uh, they were all designed to utilize things like this thermistor mount here. Uh, these are a closed loop system, so they can work without a power reference. Uh, and they're a different type of sensor than the one that you would get, uh, that you've probably seen before me use, which is the uh, uh, thermocouple, or the diode uh, version. And they're, um, uh, they're an open uh, loop system, so you need to be able to have an accurate uh, measurement of the, the reference level that's actually on uh, the meter. And that's how you typically do it, is with this, um, with one of these types of meters. And you do this with the, the calibrator here. You make sure this meter is working with this calibrator. So let's take a quick uh, uh, look at this guy. Uh, you know, on the front panel here, you can see the various controls to set zero, to set the different types of tests, the uh, resistance, because the thermistor mounts and the bowler meters or whatever other items that you could plug in on the 432 and the 431s had different uh, resistances. Uh, you can set your power meters. Now, how this works is it feeds out these two, uh, uh, it connects to the, the meter through the, th the thermistor mount cable and has, uh, uh, two inputs, a uh, uh, or two outputs, a VRF or inputs actually for this guy, uh, VRF and VCOM. And uh, if you've seen the other video, you would have seen how uh, that system works. So let's take a quick look at how uh, uh, that system block diagram looks. Let me just zoom in a little bit. And what you can see here is this is the power meter, and the power meter has a set of uh, bridges that it uses the thermistor to be the other half of the bridge. And what it has is it has an RF input, which is the, the mist part of the thermistor where the RF is coming in. And that has a V comp, which is to compensate for the thermal uh, noise and the temperature. So the RF comes into one of the thermistors and the other thermistor is mounted very close so that it gets the same thermal experience, but it doesn't have to have the, uh, it doesn't get the RF. Now the 432A can take those signals, chop them up, work with them a bit, and basically it gets rid of uh, the thermal noise, so it comes out at the other end with a very accurate uh, RF value. This meter, this calibrator takes from that uh, meter, it takes that RF, the uh, V comp and the VRF coming into here and comes into these uh, precision voltage dividers that are then fed into these uh, op amps that will send a signal back to the unit looking like it is the thermistor mount. And that way you can set a known value back to this guy here and have it act like it sees a virtual uh, thermistor mount. So with that, uh, let's take a quick look uh, inside uh, the unit. So we'll grab our, oh, let me zoom back out. We'll grab our uh, posi drive uh, item, a uh, screwdriver, and we'll take the, let's take the top off here. I expect there's going to be a lot of open space in this thing because it's really not that very uh, difficult or complex a unit. So here we can see this is a main board at the top, a bunch of little transistors. Uh, you know, we have our pots where we're going to be able to adjust this guy uh, so that it is uh, properly uh, calibrated. If we have a look in, you know, you can see in there there's an awful lot. Let me see if I can get you some light in there. You know, there's basically the power supply is in here, and then there's a lot of open space uh, there. And then on the front, if we look in, you can see that basically, again, there's a, there's a lot of open space down there, and then these wires just come into the controls. These uh, cinch uh, 
uh, connectors, sport edge connectors, or card edge connectors. Uh, incredibly popular. It looks like they, you know, they must have had a great relationship with them in producing this because they're used in all of the equipment of this vintage. And in fact, even later equipment, uh, you know, often quite hard to find these uh, guys. Anyway, um, you can see that that's a, a fairly standard looking uh, board for the, the period, you know, uh, with the lines. It looks to be very easy to repair. So, you know, hopefully if there's any issues uh, with this, because I bought this and this was pulled from a working environment. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so hopefully this should be pretty easy to, to test and, and give it a try. All right, well, let's uh, put the cover back on and then hook it up and uh, we'll take a, a look at it uh, uh, in operation and we'll see if it, uh, if it does in fact work. Okay, so now we have, all right, so now we're all set up, we're all connected. Hopefully you'll be able to see uh, what is going on here? Uh, anyway, let's set this up for a, a little test. You know, so before we turn it on, we have the 200. We're set 200 there, 100 per cal. Uh, because this is a perfect idealized um, 478A, as far as this guy's concerned, or thermistamount, as far as this guy's concerned, calibration factor is 100. So we'll set it at one milliwatt, one milliwatt uh, uh, range here. Uh, let's turn this guy on. Okay, and we'll turn this guy on. Okay, well, as you can see, we're, let me move this a little around so it's a little better to see there. As you can see, we pretty much bang on one there. All right, so now what it says that we need to, to do to get this to work is we're going to come down here to point one. I'm going to set this to zero. And then what I have is, uh, I have this cable here. Uh, this is connected up to a, a, a DVM. And so now with this set to zero, I need to change the output of the DVM until I get zero volts. Oh, there we go. All right. This is a little bit tricky. It's supposed to be set to zero volts, plus or minus two, vo two millivolts. So it's going to be, a and it looks like there's a little delay, a little settling time required. So yeah, you're supposed to just leave these to warm up for half an hour before you do anything with them. So I'm guessing that, as you can see, if you look down here, that's slowly rising. So I think this is probably you need to leave this turned on for a bit so that it can warm up and settle down. Uh, anyway, what we're seeing is if I bring it back down, you know, I can keep zeroing that down towards zero there. And for the point of argument let's just assume that that is good and so we're seeing you know a bit over the one there but that would be because of the zero you know So there's clearly some, there's clearly those contacts I think need to be uh, cleaned up a little bit. So we can keep driving this down and it's still rising. You can see it's still floating up.
it's slowing down a little bit but not particularly much anyway this is fascinating video so let's turn it out of here okay and you'll see yeah it comes in very close to one so let's go up to point one let me see very close to point one there if we go to one very close to one there if we go to ten two three and then ten well, nice so when they said this was pulled from a, a working environment they weren't uh, they weren't necessarily lying we saw a bunch of pots in there that uh, we can go and, uh, and fiddle uh, so I'm going to go look up the calibration uh, adjustment process for this uh, and we might uh, give those uh, items a clean and see how they go in the future anyway I hope you found this uh, interesting uh, it's just a quick video on the 8477A if you like it please give it a thumbs up and uh, I'll uh, catch you later I'm waiting for some uh, additional parts to arrive uh, for my E4406A uh, repair so uh, once I get those we'll take uh, uh, you know a look at uh, part four of that again all right catch you around and hope you enjoyed it